Hi, 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 everyone. So I'm back and I wanted to give you guys more manifesting tips because that's what y'all been asking for. I'm in my bathroom, with this little echo. Excuse me, okay. So we're gonna be doing more manifesting tips. And the first thing I wanna talk about is, okay, here's the deal. We have witches. We have spiritualists, we have mystics, we have alchemists, we have magicians, we have, you know, all types of shamans, spiritual workers. But the reason that I truly admire and like alchemy is because it works with divine law, universal law. And it is not a religion. It is a way of thinking, free thinking, thinking outside the box. That's why I like it. Plus, a long time ago, okay, so a long time ago, women were witches, you know, they practiced herbal, natural, pagan um, practices, shaman, you know, shaman, medicine women. But alchemy was mainly a male dominated area because it required education. And back then, women were not able to, you know, do certain things that we could do now. So, a lot of the mystery schools and a lot of the uh, schools like that were only mostly for men. Now, some of the men taught the women, you know, my, you know, blah, 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 blah. But now that you're able to do whatever you like, why not learn something? You know, so that's why I like alchemy. In this book, I put the title and the author in the description, but I got this from the library. Oh my God, I, I went to this new library and they have occult books, they have alchemy books. I was just so happy. Okay, so on Becoming an Alchemist, A Guide for the Modern Magician by Catherine McCoon. Okay, so this is really good. I haven't read it, but I've been thumbing through it and I found something that I really like. This right here, Remembering the Future. So this is what I wanna talk about. And this video is not going to be so long because I have to do something, but later. But remembering the future. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit from this book. It says, in the Arthurian legends, the magician Merlin is said to live backward. Remember when I was telling you guys yesterday? I mean, no, that was the other channel. Well, I was talking about the same thing before I even read this book. Okay, So Merlin is said to live backward. When he thinks of the future, he is remembering. Okay, when he thinks of the past, he is anticipating. Okay, okay, anticipating means you can't wait for it to happen, you're nervous about it, you're expecting it, whatever, whatever. Okay, this is not as outlandish as it sounds. You too might come to experience time in that way. As both the Gospels and Merlin legends suggest, this altered sense of time is the key to working magic. Okay, so. In its pure form, we don't experience time. We can perceive and measure its movement only by using something physical as a reference, such as the hands on a clock, the sun, the growth and decline of our own bodies, because physical objects are absent from the spiritual world. Time cannot be marked there, right? Time cannot be marked there in a sense the vertical is a dimension of time alone. You can call it absolute time, or you could call it timelessness, for it lacks the forward march that we're on Earth, that we on Earth regard as very essence of time. It can't go forward because there's nothing fixed to serve as a departure point. Some people try to approximate this experience of absolute time by floating in a sensory deprivation tank. You know, those water, I wanted to try that and someone in my group actually tried it. And it's like, have y'all seen Stranger Things, how they used to put her in that water with the salt and you float. Um, some people try to um, experience that by sensory deprivation tanks, but you know, their pulse still marks minutes. Like they can start feeling their pulse. So it's kind of hard. Um, so when I say like go into the darkness, but this is a really good book. Y'all should get it. I'm, I'm still reading it. 
you're, that's what you're basically doing. You're going outside of time and you're creating something and you're visualizing yourself having something, which is remembering the future. So then you mark that it's already done in time. So then you're manifesting that timeline and it is created basically. So if y'all were looking for a new book, because y'all are always asking me what other book do you recommend, definitely this one. And um, it's, you know, a lot of people talk about, oh, I would like to have like-minded friends. There's a chapter or section called Finding Your Companions. And it says the word hermit comes from the same root as hermeticist. Because the alchemist and the spiritual person is always mostly alone. You know how y'all always ask me, well, I wish I had more friends or I'm trying to drag people into my spiritual belief. The word hermit comes from hermeticism because it is a self-actualization journey. Okay. Um, it is a lonely endeavor, but appearances in this case are deceiving. You can't make much headway with alchemy if you're working in complete isolation. So you need a little bit of helpers and friends, you know. You might, okay, I'm reading from the book, okay. You might think right now that you're never, that you've never met an alchemist. Yet I wouldn't be surprised at all if you, you know, in a few years, you do. You'll be surrounded by them because this is growing, you know. Everywhere you go, there's crystals and essential oils now and, People are decorating their homes with crystals now because it's like, you know, supposed to be um, this new thing. But um, it's replacing religion. I think spirituality is definitely replacing religion. Each and every day I go somewhere, there's T-shirts with, you know, spiritual things on it. There's stores that are selling more spiritual items. Even the libraries in the Bible belts, some of them, are starting to have more occult and alchemy books and things like that. So I feel like people are kind of coming into knowledge versus religion now and their own personal spiritual journeys. So you're probably going to meet more, you know, spiritual people. Um, so I'm going to read that okay, later. But I'm just kind of giving y'all a little bit of excerpts from here so y'all can understand uh, more manifesting techniques. Uh, so the chapter is called Living Backwards and Time, Freedom, and Magical Intuition. This will help you manifest things. And also a lot of people that have trouble forgiving themselves or who live in the past too much. If you pretend as if it never happened or it hasn't happened yet and how you felt before the time it happened, you could get your peace back and your joy back. You know what I'm saying? So if you can't get over something, pretend you in your mind where there's no physical things, visualize a couple days before the incident occurred. How are you feeling? What were you doing? What can, what could you have done to avoid running into the issue that you got into? In your mind, visual, visualize yourself avoiding the entire issue and replace that memory with something else. And every time you start to think back to that past issue, do the exact same thing over and over and over because it's going to help you get over it faster. It's going to help you move forward. And you're not going to think about it as much because it's the vibration that keeps you feeling a certain way. So if you're vibrating on a higher frequency because you replace that memory with something better mentally, then when you do think about it, it's not going to hurt as much. It's not going to be as regretful because the exercise that you're getting ready to do with it. Exactly. So if I'm thinking about a bad thing that I did or somebody did to me, and I think back a day before, if I would have just done something different, what would I have done? Oh, I could have gone to the beach. I could have went shopping. Ooh, I could have got my nails done and looked cute and went out. And um, people buy me uh, some drinks. I could have been, uh, oh, ooh, somebody asked me out on a date. 
Um, then I went on that date, the day the bad thing happened. He brought me flowers and roses. And we had champagne and everybody was jealous and we took a picture. You know, then we went dance. You know, just create a whole nother story to replace it. And then that's your memory. It's going to start to replace the other one. Even though the other one will still be there, it will be like a faded background memory. Okay. Uh, this is how hypno hypnotists, because I got a book on hypnosis too, y'all. This is how hypnotists make you think something happened when it really never happened. Thank you, honey golden. Learning so much from you. So I got this book too, y'all. Hypnosis. This book also talks about the same type of technique, how hypnotists can change your memory of events. They can make you remember something you've never done. Never. You, they will have you thinking you've been to Paris, you've been to China. Thank you. <laughs> Someone says I look, I look gorgeous and young. You guys, yes, thank you. I tried today with the makeup. Um. So this book is Hypnosis, Controlling the Inner You and Other People by Dr. Hans Holzer. Got this from the library too. And it's a really easy guidebook. It's almost written like an idiot's guide. It's a very easy read. Um, have you ever read Quantum Healing and Living the Body? I saw a book like that and um, in the library. Uh, so maybe next time I'll get it. But yes, I've heard about it. Uh, I do use some of those techniques, but I just call it healing with dark energy. Mm. I also got this book, y'all. Instant Influence, How to Get Anyone to Do Anything Fast. The Motivational Approach Scientifically Proven to succeed in less than seven minutes. It's actually pretty good. It's more psychological and using different words to get you, get your way. Um, so if you're like, a lot of people say, oh, I have roadblocks, I can't get past this. People just don't like me, A, B, C, and D. Perhaps you're using negative words. Perhaps the phrases that you're using are pushing people away. And a book like this could really help you reword and restructure your vocabulary to get more people to do what you like them to do. Because everything is not magical. Most magic, all magic is mental. So you gotta study psychology as well. And techniques. Um, because like I said, back in the old days, women were only weren't allowed to do certain things. They couldn't get certain books. They couldn't get in certain schools. They couldn't learn from certain philosophers. So they just had to stick to what their moms taught them, what their mom's moms taught them, what they could learn. There were a lot of reasons women and witches use spells because and rhyme them so they could remember them because they write them down. You know, they weren't as educated back then. So now that you are able to have access to all the knowledge that, let's say, the alchemists had and the, um, the philosophers of old had and the magicians and things like that, the male magicians and things like that, the, the secret uh, societies and the fraternal orders and stuff had, it's available to you now. And a lot of women shy away from this and continue to only mess with herbs, crystals, rocks, and oils, when you if you combine them, you could be twice as powerful. Okay, that's why I try to bring this to you guys, because <clears throat> as a woman, you want the edge, you want the advantage. Okay. If all you have are some herbs and crystals and some Reiki healing. You are no match for an alchemist. 
a psych, you know, someone who studies psychology and hypnosis and influence and time perception. You are no match. And the, the reason that I want to push this and I encourage women to read and other things is because it's very, very powerful combined with what you already know. Okay. And if you combine the two, there's no stopping you. Okay. You will not be stopped ever. You know, both sides. Underneath, on top, in this dimension and all the other dimensions, you know it. So thank you. Someone says you're my favorite teacher. I appreciate that. Um so then we have a section called the occult prison. It's in this book. And a lot of people get stuck. I feel like people, a lot of people get stuck in the technical side of things instead of just letting it go where it wants to go. Okay, so when magicians feel like giving themselves <clears throat> the heebie-jeebies, you'll hear them invoke occult imprisonment. For example, they'll say Madame Belofsky was incapacitated for seven years due to her enemies had put her in an occult prison. Oh, this is talking about something else. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to read through it real quick. Uh, this sounds like some uh, get out kind of stuff. The occult prison is thought is a thought form that prevents its thinker from exercising freedom. The most rudimentary version, what you might call the county jail of occult prisons. The damned if you do, damned if you don't proposition. It's a thought that renders you incapable of action because no matter what you do, you're screwed. If you're feeling more ambitious, you can erect an occult alcatraz, an entirely closed belief system such as the one on page 138. After you build the occult prison, your next challenge is to figure out how to escape from it. There are several possible methods if you could look for a tiny hole in the wall. Okay, so this is some get out stuff. Get out. Like I said, hypnosis. You're, if you're no, if you, if they can put Madame Belowski in a cult prison, it's because they knew something she did. So just like that lady did on Get Out, when she had her little teacup and put him in the sunken place. Okay, so hypnosis is basically the power of suggestion to the conscious and the subconscious mind. Um, programming of your subconscious mind while you're conscious and having yourself agree with it as well as your physical body being um, in agreement. So you don't have to get these exact books if you can't find it, but Amy's like guide on hypnosis that's easy to read. Don't get something huge because you'll just be like overwhelmed. Get something small to start out with, you know, something fun. Like goes into uh, what is it? What is hypnosis exactly? It goes into the power of suggestion. Um, there's there is a code of ethics, which most people don't follow anyway. <laughs> Beware of involuntary hypnosis. Okay. Be aware of public communication. You know how a lot of people say, oh, the, the television is programming you, A, B, C, and D. Receiving negative messages. Lingering messages. Um, the power of publicity. Selling, like selling hard and soft, like when people are just selling you something or you don't even realize this, they're selling you something and you buy it. There's political action, separating opinion and fact, and invading our privacy. 
your best defense tells you how to defend yourself against those things, to how to be more aware, how to resist the undue influence, and how to adopt your own philosophy. And then the, the conclusion. So this is like a really easy, broken down book that anyone can understand. It's written in layman terms, layman's terms, no giant words. So very easy to understand. Check this chapter out. The closet. I'm going, y'all can go read that one by yourself. <laughs> Who wrote it? Dr. Hans Holster. PhD, was it PhD? Oh no, he's the best. Um, and then this book is by Michael V. Pantaloon, PhD. And this is Instant Influence. Motivational approach scientifically proven to succeed in seven minutes to get people to do anything fast. So if you're into sales or Whatever, this is good. If you're into influence, influencing people, that book is good. If you got a husband that don't listen to you, this book is good. You got kids that don't listen to you, this book is good. If you have a boss that you don't like, that you need to listen to you, this book is good. If your mama won't shut up and listen to you, this book is good. There you go. <laughs> Can you imagine how good it feels to be able to control every person, every situation, and influence those people to your way? Could you imagine that feeling? Y'all need to get some more books that's not, you know, about spells and crystals and stuff because that's application of the physical. This is a application of the mental, okay? Got to have them both. As above, so below. As within, so without. As within, so without. So you got to be on it. Y'all, I didn't blend good enough. I just did a, a, a makeup video. <laughs> That's why I'm in the bathroom. And I just did not believe good enough, y'all. So anyway, um, these books, mental, psychological, you know, influence books, alchemy books are going to be what's going to take you to that next level and take your life to the next level, okay? If I get interrupted by a doorbell, I'm going to have to cut it off because I'm expecting some company and I will have to get, but I will talk until I hear that doorbell. Okay. Um, why do people get stuck? Because they're afraid of change and they're afraid of success and they are afraid to move to the next level, whatever it is. It's mostly our fear that they get stuck. Okay. Or they start making excuses instead of seeking solutions. That is another reason why a lot of people get stuck or they get stuck in what I call the, a lot of people get stuck in the conscious awakening and they focus too much on why, what, what they're upset about. Um, oh, I've been lied to and this is a lie and this is a lie. And this, you know, they keep looking backwards and, you know, trying to, they, they live in the anger of the cultural and the, conscious awakening and they get stuck there if your mind is beyond that because the past the future and the present all exist at the same time because you're beyond time you understand how you can create change and also um benefit from everything including what made you angry okay so a lot of people get stuck because they get stuck in just obtaining a bunch of useless knowledge that they're never going to be able to apply because they're trapped, um, you know, in a system that they can't escape, such as, you know, uh, a lot of things that, that don't allow them freedom. 
such as working too many hours, you know, they might have made too many mistakes and are having to pay for them, um, such as their focus being on something else too much, their priorities being out of order, um, you know, the not, not having enough knowledge or being able to apply the knowledge due to uh, the people surrounding them or their environment. So they get stuck. The only way out of getting out of stuck is to seek your way out. Just like in this book with the occult prison, there's also life prison, not physical prison, but a mental prison, an environmental prison prison, a conscious prison that we put ourselves in sometimes, and we don't see a way out. So if you don't see a way out, create a way out because you are a creator. A lot of people will make excuses and say, oh, the people are against me or, you know, I can't get a break or make one. Shoot. Don't you have the ability to create? Don't you have the ability to manifest? Don't you have the ability to do A, B, C, and D? You can do it. I did it. Uh, my mom did it. Her mom did it. You know? I, women in my group do it. Men in my group have done it. Um... I have so many people that like, oh, thank you so much for doing what you do, making videos, helping me, and my whole life has changed. And I don't take credit for any of it. I just take gifts. Because they want like this this one, this one lady, she was so nice. Um, she went to Egypt and she she said, You I changed her life. She wanted to give me a gift. And I said, Ooh, I love anything from that region, bring me whatever. I don't even care what it is. So she decided to get me a necklace made with my name. So in hieroglyphs. So I was like, oh my goodness, I love that. That is so special to me that because that's the first time that I was like reconnected with a past, like a memory or just really sucked into that knowledge as in the third grade. And um, it was very special. I, I haven't told her this, but because she's still traveling. But um, I'm gonna show you the video. In written Heather. Line for strength and power for letter L and the feather of independence. Wow. And then the tea and the bread loaf for eating too much. Uh-oh. Good okay. health. Everybody. Oh, good health. Okay. Intelligence. She knows too much. Oh, oh. Love and prosperity. Intelligent again. And she's bossy. Oh. Little wow. bossy. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We're having this a necklace made for you. Yeah. And this is the one we're going to make it. for her. This is, I will do this to you before. Isn't that nice? So I just want to say thank you so much. <laughs> I don't know if she wants me to say her name on there, but thank you. So it's going to come from Egypt. It'll be made by that dude on there, and he said what my name meant and it was like the letters in my name is very on point <laughs> at least for me so I like I do like gifts <laughs> um, these are a gift from one of my viewers um, they like to sit like I have an Amazon wish list that people like to pick off of because they don't want to send me something I'll probably never use or already have. Or they'll try to do something extra special. And I I don't, um, I don't ever, as an alchemist, I don't ever say no, thank you. Oh, I don't need that because that's prosperity. You never reject any type of gift or prosperity if you want more to come in. You know, so some people might say, ooh, she's greedy. Ooh, that's just 
she shouldn't be getting stuff with people. And no, it's the universe bringing me prosperity and me accepting it so more can come in because I brought and helped them get the knowledge to get prosperity too, where they have enough to bring some to me. Right? <laughs> so never say no to something that someone's trying to give you, especially if it's a gift. Now, if it's a trick and it's like, oh, sign up for this free and then they'll charge you some later. Don't mm -mm. see the tricks first. <laughs> but can you also accept gifts from negative people, even if they can manipulate afterwards? If it's a gift, you can't manipulate. OK, if you give a gift, you give it freely. There is no manipulation. And if you don't care what people think, then it never will be a manipulation. If you give me a gift, oh, thank you. Oh, and if they try to come back and say something, well, I did this and that. Okay, thank you. I said, thank you. What do you want? When you give a gift, you give freely from your heart. You don't give it because you want something back. Right? So if it's a gift, it's a gift. Don't expect me. Don't expect one back unless it's Christmas or your birthday. Or because I want to, you know. Um, and I'm not trying to be rude because, you know, I'm, I'm talking about in real life, not to our viewers and people like that, but in real life, you know, if, if your friend gives you something or your sister, brother, somebody gives you something and then they expect you to do something back, you got to let them know. If you want to give me a gift, give it freely. And when you give a gift, you're going to do it the same way. And a lot of people, you know, they talk about, you know, a lot of people that are and this talk. It talks about it in this hypnosis book. A lot of people are fake in their morals. A lot of people have fake morals and they come out. The truth comes out through hypnosis. So if you have someone holier than thou or always telling you, oh, you're going to hell or you're doing something wrong. If you would put them under hypnosis, thank you, Craig White, for the donation. If you were to put them under hypnosis and ask them to do something against their moral beliefs, it's said here that most people will not go against their own moral beliefs if they are true. Like, if you ask someone, oh, you need to kill this person, they won't do it, not even under hypnosis. But if they do it in secret, like, oh, you need to strip or something. If they're not against that or if they, um, you know, do something freaky, they'll do it. If they're open and not objected morally to it. So you can expose a lot of fake moral people with hypnosis as well. But like I said, most people's morals are fake anyway. That's why I say create your own. And people know, you know, know you better. And things like that. You cut off all your family. Well, sometimes you have to in order to grow spiritually and sometimes They'll come back around later, you know. <sighs> your mom holds everything she does over your head, and she always says, I owe her a lot. Um, I think mothers use that because they gave you life, they raised you, and they gave you a lot. But when you give birth to a child, by law, depending on the country, by law, you're supposed to do certain things by law okay, or you'll go to prison. Um, if she didn't give you up for adoption, she didn't abandon you at the fire station, then by law, she was required to do most of that. And anything she did extra was should have been out of unconditional love for you. Now, if she's going to use that over your head, it just could be a manipulation technique because she can't 
get you to listen to her any other way. So if she read this book, she might not have to do that. She learned how to talk to you in a, a different way by using a different approach or different words. You may comply with her more. You know, it's, it's all about things like that, how you talk. And she might not be a bad mother. She just might not know any other way to get you to listen to her. You know, like I said, a lot of women are not educated on psychology um, unless they took it in college. They're not educated on how to influence people, the, the correct words to use, more positive wording to use. They're not educated on that. They're not conscious of it. And they're not aware that they're making other people feel bad. And sometimes they are. But that's the only method that they might understand. So you can be a better mother or parent when you grow up. Just because now you understand there are methods that are different that will be more helpful. Okay. Sure, sometimes that's your mom. Yeah, just, you know what? You gotta be, you gotta be sympathetic with certain people. You know, if that's your mom, you're just like, oh, that's just my mom. That's who she is. Accept it, but don't absorb it. Accept it. That's who she is, but you don't take it into here. You know, uh, you you make an excuse for her. You know how you make excuse for some people? Oh, they just look crazy. They're a little off. You know, before you introduce your friends to your crazy friend, it's the same thing. My, mom, my, my friend a little off now, you know, she look crazy, but she's cool. You know, that's what you got to do in your mind for your mom. My mom a little bossy. She a little negative, but she means well. Try to see what she really means. Try to see the reasoning behind what she's doing and then take that in. Because my mom is negative. She was just raised in that era. I think it's just an era. What I try to do is try to figure out what it is she really means. Or I try to block out the negative and hear the message. You got to try. You know what I'm saying? But if it's just really bad, I would say give yourself some space and maybe get talk to her about, you know, being less negative. Um, maybe give her a few books as a gift or send her some little links or videos if she internet savvy. And just talk to her like you're like a loving daughter. I don't know. <laughs> I had to let my mother go. She's a and some people, you just got to let them go. That's so true. But if you can salvage it, try. You can't. Distance yourself. Text and call on holidays and acknowledge them as your family still, but you don't have to be around it. There's a lot of family I cut off, but I, I didn't cut off like my main family. The distant families, my cousins, some, some cousins, some aunts, some whatever, I, they're not completely cut off, but I don't connect with them. <laughs> Cause they, you know, a lot of people don't understand this thought process and they will label you crazy, but they just are not on that level of understanding. So if my life is better by being crazy, been crazy as me. Okay. If, if you can get a good life being crazy, be crazy. <laughs> you text her that you love her and I'm strong just like she wants me to be. And I understand that she tried to teach me all these years. Okay. That's cool. Do I use oud oils? Have you noticed any difference? I I was at a point, I used some yesterday. I think I could still smell it a little bit. I used some yesterday, yes. Uh, I do use oud. Um, there's many types of oud, but yes, I do use 
Hi, Sasha. I do use the um, the ooze that the Royal Bloodline sends me, and I really like them. They smell good. They they help you vibrate on a, a higher frequency as well. Um, so I, I do like them. I have the one I used yesterday was the Nile. Something about the Nile. I did a review on that whole bath set. Uh, very Egyptian. Okay. So my company is almost here. I'm just going to take y'all in here with me. Oh. Sasha does not want me to um, be all loud. You grew up with extremely racist grandma. 